Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. This is the 1918 Ludendorff Offensive, and we are picking back up from where we left off last night. Uh, so far, uh, we have progressed a little bit over a month into the game. It's April 14th of 1918. Remember, the turns are two-day turns in this particular operational scenario. And we've broken through the front line near Lyon. Uh, we have driven to the west. We've taken Sossons. We've taken villers Cotteras, And we are threatening to take Chateau Thierry uh, to secure our southern flank. We are also working on Campania to secure our northern flank. Meanwhile, we have two divisions and a detachment driving west toward Paris. Uh, we have completely broken the front open. The French are trying to plug the gap with five American units on the flank. Um, we've also taken Reims, and we've also broken out near Valmy, where we've managed, I just realized, to encircle more than 10% of the entire French army at Verdun. There are nine divisions encircled in Verdun, although this is a very loose encirclement, and I imagine they will break through this turn. It's still pretty crazy to see that we've also broken through at Verdun and encircled them. We definitely don't have the strength to knock these fortifications down anytime soon, but it's still a pretty interesting accomplishment. I don't think the French have enough troops to deploy all along this line, because if you take a look here, they've got 81 units, nine of them are encircled at Verdun. The British have 55 units, the Americans have nine, they're bringing more strength to the party every day. But if we take a look at the losses so far, the French have lost 40 units. That's more than 50% of their remaining army uh, is already cat well I guess a third of the total units that the, they've had in the game so far are, are casualties already the British haven't lost anywhere near as bad um, 10 units they seem much stronger and they're not really losing strength the Americans have lost two units and that's important to kind of keep whittling them down so they don't uh, don't build up a really strong force and the Germans have only lost six I'm curious to see if the French will begin pulling troops out of the front line of the, the formation to the south and east of Verdun, because they do have a pretty unbroken front here uh, in areas where there's no real immediate risk of, of a German breakthrough, uh, and we don't have any artillery here. So I could see the AI maybe deciding to divert forces to the north, but for the moment anyway, we have this big encirclement. I don't know if Verdun provides its own supply, and, uh, and we've also broken through and we're getting close to Paris, closer than the, the Germans did historically in this particular, uh, this particular offensive. The risk to this offensive perhaps is the British pulling some of their troops south and trying to attack south to cut us off near Sossons. We've deployed a pretty strong force on our northern front, including three crack divisions up here, as well as several other supporting divisions. We're trying to take Compagna to secure that northern flank and cut this rail line to the east but the British do have pretty considerable force. The other real risk at this point is a British breakthrough to the north near Belgium, a little bit south of Belgium near the Lille region. Uh, the British have a gap here where they could in theory push through. They've also destroyed a couple of divisions up in this area and they have tank support, so that's definitely a threat. We've tried to maintain the pressure by destroying isolated British units. We've also destroyed a Belgian division near Newport, um, so they'll have to plug that gap. So we'll see if we can maintain the pressure in the south while holding in the north. It'll be interesting to see how things shake out. But we've at least broken through, and these troops near Paris anyway are in the open. So I've already done my turn for April 14th. Let's jump forward to the next turn, which will be I believe, April 16th, and see how things shake out. German morale is boosted by the capture of Reims over here, which we took last turn. French morale falls due to the loss of Reims. Hungry German soldiers plunder Reims looking for food, so I wonder if that actually hurts our morale. French fortress artillery bombard the Germans at Verdun. Generals von der Goltz and Mannerheim defeat the Bolshevik forces in Finland. And it's raining again, which seems to give the advantage to the attacker. Uh, Crusader Light, um, thanks for coming by. Hope you have a good one. See you, T-Wong. Just trying to mix things up a little bit, that's all. The British are shifting some tanks to the south, it looks like. We'll get back to war in the sea, though. Eventually. Just not tonight. Alright, so air battles occurring over Belgium. 
British attack aircraft are hitting some of our troops there as well, just north of Arras. Oh, I'm working tomorrow, Venix. I didn't, or Venskid. I didn't take off for opening day as much as I would like, although I don't really have many, many, um, meetings in the afternoon, so the glory of work from home is I'll probably be able to watch most of the game. All right, they're attacking this isolated division up there. That's a little bit concerning. They may destroy it. They're also attacking this, deta I think it's a detachment on the flank of the advance on Paris. They're trying to break out of Verdun. They did drive back the encircling division, but we still maintain the uh, zone of control here, cutting off Verdun. A lot of reinforcement of some of their units occurring this turn. Not as quite uh, as aggressive a turn so far as it was last turn, where last turn seemed like they were attacking everywhere. This turn, it seems like they're doing some replacements. Yeah, uh, Gassi, Gassimo, uh, Gao, this is uh, basically 1918, so the American troops are beginning to arrive, but not enough of them have dis uh, arrived to decisively turn the conflict. Russia has fallen in the east, and so the Germans have shifted more than a million reinforcements to the Western Front. And so for a very brief period in the spring of 1918, the Germans actually had a pretty decided numerical superiority over the Allies on the Western Front. Oh, Italy's preparing for war? Does I mean they're going to get a bunch of Italian reinforcements too? But anyways, I was saying, so for a very brief period, the Germans had a, a pretty decisive advantage in terms of frontline manpower, and they also leveraged some new tactics, stormtrooper tactics, that allowed them to more effectively assault fixed positions. And so they gained some ground on some sort of last-ditch efforts uh, attacks against uh, against the Entente until they eventually ran out of steam, the Allies counterattacked, and the entire German sort of country fell apart. Okay. Hey, Coffee. Good to see you. All right, so they did throw the 3rd Division in our path. This 5th Bavarian Division got hit pretty hard there. I can't even reinforce it fully. That spearhead does not have enough strength. That is very clear. All right. Um, first things first, let's try and reduce the 162nd Division to try and flank this position of all these American units down here. Okay. I can't do any reconnaissance, which sucks because reconnaissance can make your artillery and your attacks more effective, but because of the bad weather, I can't, I can't do that here. So we'll destroy that French division south of Reims. and advance artillery south here. Any of these units somewhat exposed? These guys have a three out of... Uh, all right, so Verdun is surrounded. I'm not sure what the, su the supply situation is very bad for them. Nice. At least for some of their units. So we need to take advantage of that while we can. So let's go ahead and shell this unit on the flank. If we can destroy nine other units and take all the National Morale Centers around Verdun, that's going to be pretty, pretty bad news for the, for the French. All right, it's this unit here. Move our artillery into support, reducing these enemy fortifications probably next turn. Strengthen our encirclement here a little bit while moving our artillery in. I'm not going to attack those units, by the way. I will attack this unit here because it's not in the fortress. Okay, so we shattered another French division here. Okay, two more French divisions in the Verdun pocket destroyed. Let's hit the fifth French division with artillery just because it is positioned in a spot that would make a relief of Verdun possible. 
I don't think they'll attack in that situation with those. Alright, can these guys reinforce at all? They can, but they can entrench. Well, they're already entrenched, actually, so we'll leave them there. This 13th Landvar Division is critical, I think, in holding the position here, although their supply, they're too far forward to draw good supply. We'll advance this guy to Valmy. British tanks in the south, huh? Perhaps just to fill the gap of where our troops are? Hopefully they're not going to try and break through there. They do have quite a bit of artillery around there, though. They have a gap here, so they are they have started pulling troops out of the front line in this and sort of the southeast, as I said as I suggested they might. Is this division like Oh, okay, never mind. They're trying to flank me. Screw that. We're gonna surround you guys. The pocket near the Colmar. Alright. We'll surround this French division here. The 17th division advanced to try and flank Colmar, and now we've swung three divisions around it. We'll attack it next turn if it doesn't withdraw or get support. There, there is an open gap along this railway, railway here from Busang, but I'm guessing they won't be able to attack. If they, if they don't attack this turn, then I can shift the 19th division up here to block. Can we reinforce these guys just by one point? Hmm. Oh, I didn't actually mean to do that. Oh, oops. All right. Hopefully they don't attack this guy. He's dug in at least. This guy can entrench now, so we'll do that. To the south. I want to move this artillery forward to help. We'll see what they do with the 5th Division. I'm guessing they'll just reinforce, but they may pull it back. It's in no shape to lead any kind of relief effort. So next turn, we might be able to get in on taking one of the National Morale Objectives in Verdun, although I'm not sure that we'll be able to do that. We'll have to see. Let's reinforce the troops along the front here. Get them back up to full strength. At least the ones we can. Wish I could move this unit, but I can't. Division. Let that artillery build up its shell stockpile. We're gonna hit the 28th division here, mainly because I've got tanks right there, so I wanna destroy it if I can. Destroyed it without loss. Hell yes. So, what are we looking at? Enemy troops are at 79 divisions. The British are increasing their strength. The Americans got two new units also. Um, that American division is pretty weak. What can I do here? One to six against this British 30th division, I think. Well, actually, first, let's do one to six against the American 27th. 
and we'll destroy it. Hit the British 30th over here. Then destroy that. Then pull these guys back. We're going to pull the 5th Bavarian back to try and get some reinforcements up to it. headquarters unit forward. Some artillery forward. Reinforce these guys as best we can. Pull the first division back just slightly. Try and entrench the 107th to lure the enemy in to attack them, because they'll be a little bit more protected than the 20th, which badly needs reinforcements. Um, the 20, 223rd, that is, is going to reinforce next turn. I'm hoping to be able to get the the uh, 22nd here, and or sorry, the 20th and the 22nd here reinforced next turn. Meanwhile, the 6th, 4th, and 1st divisions are all crack. So I might be able to swing these west to try and break through at um, CN's next turn, but the enemy is obviously pulling some troops back. They pulled some Portuguese troops also to try and shield Paris. We're only a handful of, of hexes away. Place our losses with the air units where we can because of the bad weather. All right, should we... Might be a bad idea to operate some artillery forward also to help the drive on Paris. I just don't have a rail line that can get them particularly close. They'll probably be out of the action for another turn. Although if I wait, I think I'll be able to use this rail line here to drive them west, so maybe we'll wait one turn. My artillery deployment leaves something to be desired at the moment. Wow, they're really pulling the British back here. After some really aggressive attacks, too. Look at how open this front is right now. Pull these guys back here. Shift this troop in. And entrench. Entrench. These guys can reinforce next turn. First cavalry division there? All right, you want to put a, a Belgian cavalry division in the trenches, I think I'll hit him with artillery and then see if we can't attack him. Two to five, hell yeah. Look at those odds all day. Got him. Reinforce them. All right, so we shortened our line by pulling back from Lens. It's not a strategic town or anything like that, so no, no harm in withdrawing there. We need to deploy a new unit here, the 38th, which I'm just going to put into the Maelstrom here. The Sea War is not included in this particular scenario, so it's not something we have to worry about in this specific fight. So, trench these troops, and trench all the troops who can. deal 
with potential counterattacks. So like in theory, we could attack and have some success against the 46th division, but not enough success, I don't think, to warrant the attack. We'll wait one more turn and see if there's supply drops. They're at four after being cut off for one turn here. So I'm hopeful that their supply will drop into the almost combat ineffective range. And I, I have a stronger encirclement here than I did last turn. So we'll see how that plays out. Also, if we can destroy these troops in the south, then I can free some troops up to send north to the to the front over there. What I probably need more of in the attack is some um, headquarters units to support the advance. A lot of these guys are far away from their headquarters units, and that impacts the, the ability to draw resupply. It also impacts the ability to draw um, reinforcements. In theory, we could advance these guys forward, but I, I don't know that I want to do that. There's there's several salients here. I'd love to get in on attack and attack this British artillery, though. Let's try this. One to seven, hell yeah. We can destroy some of those British heavy guns. Got them. Okay. Too bad I can't pull my troops back now or entrench them, so they're kind of exposed here in the open. they do here got some guns here who are also a little bit exposed but fortunately most of the or several of the British units around here are not at full strength so that might weaken their ability to attack could shift these guys north I don't think I want to do that Also, I'm assuming these radio icons indicate that they're in communication with the headquarters unit over here. But if all their units are to the south, then Von Hudier's headquarters should move south. Alright, so we've still got some money left over. Let's go ahead and purchase... Well, let's actually take a look at R&D. I'm assuming we can't spend any more here. We're researching at 895. We can research up to 1,000. But I don't really... I mean, the only thing I could put more money into is anti-aircraft or heavy bombers. This will throw one more chit into heavy bombers. That maximizes my, my ability to spend. So I can't spend any more. We've got 411 left. So we'll go ahead and look at some divisions here. 220th was destroyed, so we get them back for half price. Same for the 19th reserves, so we can re-recruit re re two of the divisions that we lost. And then we'll save the remaining 87 for next turn. We'll go ahead and end the turn and move forward to April 20th, where I think we'll get some additional reinforcements coming on. Meanwhile, Italy's joining the Entente. They've obviously already been in the war. I'm assuming it just means that they're bringing reinforcements to the Western Front. So that's going to be an issue. Fortress bombardment out of Verdun, using up their their ammo in the in the encirclement there. So the real the real problem becomes as the Americans start pouring more reinforcements, and now the Italians are getting involved. Is do we have the the time to keep the pressure up and do enough damage that these additional reinforcements won't, you know, allow them to just wear us down? We didn't really make any progress toward Paris today, which is a little bit concerning about our ability to keep the momentum going. I'll have to see how many units Italy brings to the to the front. I'm assuming by this period Austria-Hungary is collapsing under their own weight. 
And so uh, the Italian front is going to free up some additional reserves. That's not good if they're trying to... Oh, God. They drove that unit back. I don't think the armor attacked, so if they move in there, they may destroy that and create a small little gap near Chateau Salines. That exposed division that I moved in to knock out that enemy artillery just died. So a couple of little mini breakthroughs. The Verdun front is really important because it'll free up additional divisions to move elsewhere that'll help take some of the pressure off some of these allied attacks. You can obviously see this turn the allies have decided we're going to go and attack. Last turn was sort of the, all right, we're going to reinforce our losses, but this turn has definitely been been the attack turn. You know, they're attacking northwest at Verdun, I guess mainly just to do damage to the encircling divisions, but it won't actually let them break out. They're also going for this other division, which is in the open. If they destroy those two divisions, they'll have a two-division breakthrough. They're attacking east also? Oh, God. American division coming out on the Paris front. American Marines near bar le -Duc against this division here, which is supplies are very low, trying to hold the encirclement. And that Mark just destroyed a German division near Chateau Salines. Fuck. Well, the pressure mounts. The other problem is a lot of the places I'm advancing actually increase the frontage and make it more difficult to hold. So, like, as we advance, depending on how we advance, it may actually increase the amount of units that we have to have on the front line to mean a cohesive front. Now, the allies, the AI has obviously said, has said, screw the cohesive front, it appears. All right. We lost the 235th and 44th divisions. Go take a look at Verdun. What's their supply situation? It didn't look like it got any worse. All right. Let's bombard the 52nd, which is on the outskirts of Verdun. Go to their entrenchments. So we destroyed that division. We'll reinforce the 50th Reserve Division. Right, let's try and crack 46 here. It's a better division here, but it's in a little bit of an exposed position. I don't have enough artillery to whittle it down further. There you go. So we took that first position on the Verdun line, although actually it's not part of the fortress. These guys are entrenched eight times. God damn, I need more artillery. Verdun's supply is already cut off, guys. So... I just don't know if they... The way the game works is they may be able to generate supply if any of those locations are... I don't know. that. I hope that's not true, because that would be... dumb. I'm going to move this unit north to try and get more artillery on the Verdun front. But first, let's reinforce these troops here. these guys how do we how the fuck do we close that gap with that our that tank moving through I 
do we just leave it and hope it doesn't they don't push more troops through through a one uh, I don't know This division's gonna die. What is this? The 4th Marine Division? Or Brigade? Maybe we'll get a brief respite this turn and the enemy will pause to... ...reinforce. Just trying to strengthen our position along the flank here. Attacking where there's opportunities. Which I guess I've fallen back into the issue I said the other day that I had with Ludendorff being dumb by attacking everywhere rather than continuing where he had some success and focusing. I have become that which I hate. So we're strengthening our position here along this front. I don't have any artillery at Chateau Terry, but I can use my armor here. Does that get rid of their entrenchments? It does a little bit. Nice, we just destroyed that American unit. So the city has fallen to us. south there a little bit. Buy some recon over here, see if we can get any visuals on any other enemy units around here. I'd like to swing my... Now that this armored unit's guarding this road north toward Chateau Thierry, I'm going to move the 79th Reserve to attack the American artillery that we just reconned. Attack the third division, which counterattacked one of our units here. Wipe it out. Very effective attack by one of our crack divisions here. Force these guys. Move the 12th forward here to wipe out this American artillery unit. guys dug in? They've got ground cover, they're not dug in. Question is, do we attack north at Campania, or do we attempt to continue driving west toward Paris? I say west toward Paris. So fourth will attack the 30th French. Sixth will slot over to hit it also. 38th will advance here. And we'll finish it off there. Then take the town. Okay. Swing this division west. Destroy the 32nd French Division here. So we actually took Campania here on the north, destroying another French Division. Also destroying a French Division at Senelis. Which in theory opens the road a little bit more clearly to Paris. Can't move them. More than that? These guys need to reinforce to secure that flank. We've 
got a very exposed line here that the AI could definitely choose to push through, so... Let's operate the 213th division north here to secure that position. We'll pull this division down to fill its spot. Um, units automatically reassign themselves big. question is, what do we do about this damn enemy tank? Alright, maybe I can free some troops up down here in the south. Let's get rid of this enemy division near Colmar. Then let's rail this division out of Colmar. I don't want to rail it directly into the front because it will not fare well versus enemy armor if it's if it has just gotten off trains. So let's pull it. I don't know, they might still attack there. Shift these troops north. Can they dig in? They can. Here. So if the enemy wants to go after this newly railed in division, they'll have to go on a one hex front. Meanwhile, these guys are dug in in the, fa in the front of this enemy armor. Yeah, I don't really have any attack air units yet. I've purchased some, so in theory we've got some on the way. But they're not here yet. I'll be able to hit this objective with three artillery next turn. It's a level eight entrenchment, though. Dear God. I don't know that I'm going to be able to hold the encirclement long enough here because he can't move to the east any further anyway. All right. Meanwhile, what are we doing in these other parts on the line? All right, we've got to try and plug these gaps because there's a, several small little gaps. Are the Belgians still at eight. Do they get reinforcements or at seven? You say seven. I don't even see any Italian units here. Maybe one. It looks like they've got one unit shifting. reinforce this guy because we're not attacking there. Maybe this turn the AI will say we need to reinforce and they won't attack. I don't know. Let's hit this with artillery. Mostly to just try and get its morale down a bit. Get rid of its ground cover. 2-5 attack. Swap with that fresh unit. I wanted to reinforce this guy. He'll probably just die if I move him in here, but it does plug the gap. Alright, so we destroyed that British detachment. Very weak front. Shift these guys. And attack the fourth Australian. Hopefully damage it enough so that it won't dare to attack and maybe they'll just stay in place and reinforce. 
Do I have new troops coming? Please tell me I have new troops coming on the next turn or two. It's the 22nd. So on the 26th, we get a bunch of air units and one division. On the 30th, we get another division. And then in May, we get a whole bunch of stuff, including some armor that I bought. But still a little ways off on some of these reinforcements. Alright, this unit anyway, the 4th Australian is definitely not attacking anyone this turn. I can't, I have no intel on what's back here. So if I advance and there's any unit here, they'll auto attack me at an advantage. But it does feel like maybe there's a hole here that can be taken advantage of. The Americans are at 7, Belgium 7. All right. Take a look at the losses. Our own losses are starting to mount. We're up to 8, but the French are at 51 and the British are at 14. The Americans are at 6. Okay, well we're nearing the end of this turn. There's a little bit more in the way of logistics. We're going to go ahead and raise some new troops, but this seems like as good a point as any to go ahead and wrap this episode up. This is episode number four in our look at Strategic Command World War I, the Ludendorff Offensive Campaign. If you are interested in this game, by the way, the game is currently on sale on my Nexus GG page, uh, which is an authorized reseller of games. You buy games through that site. You get a Steam key, but you also help any content creator out who you're purchasing through their page. And uh, I'm just calling it out mainly because the game is currently 60% off uh, through that page. It's not on sale through Matrix or through Steam, as far as I can tell. So this is sort of a, an exclusive, I guess, sale just through the Nexus channel. Uh, so if you're interested, 60% off is a pretty good deal, I think. Anyway, guys, uh, and there's a link in the description. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.